Welcome to episode 629 of the Aussie Tech Heads, recorded on the 25th of April 2019. Aussie Tech Heads is brought to you by ATH Web Hosting at athwebhosting.com.au. Servers operate on SSD drives, immediate activation, SSL certificates, Aussie support, domain registration, easy install of WordPress, Joomla and Drew Powell. And we have back again Australia's two top podcasters. I'm your host, Jason Oakley. I'm joined this week for a change because it never happens like that. Will Robinson. Yay! Robinson. <laughs> Robinson. It has been a while, hasn't it? <laughs> Will Robinson, everybody. Uh. <laughs> Take two. <laughs> it's okay. The first 15 seconds of you speaking just didn't buffer it just froze completely and then they went <laughs> will <"Lo, lo, lo, lo." laughs> I'll teach you start off the show on a high note <clears throat> yes it's only been like six weeks or something that long <laughs> how are you been Mr. Robinson <laughs> I've been better if you know <laughs> And oh. Mrs. Robinson, Jesus loves you more than you will know. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, dear. <laughs> um, yeah, no, other than having incredibly insane hay fever, which I never get. Like, I don't get hay fever. I, I never have, ever. Our and whole house reason... is full of allergies central. My daughter gets it. I get it. Now the dog's getting it. Then just That's like, what it is. Yeah. Since you came and visited. Yeah, I met some weird guy again. Up, up in the sticks. I, I, I don't want to, like literally the day after you left, I got hyper. <laughs> <laughs> You're allergic to my <clears throat> shite. <laughs> <clears throat> but uh, yeah, so other than that, that's why I look super tired. I'm, I'm honestly not as tired as I look, which is probably a good thing. I am um, as tired as I look. <laughs> and um, but yeah, other than that, um, you know, plodding along, getting there. Is, uh, I'm on holidays this week, which is you know. Semi counterproductive. It's good because obviously, being a short week anyway, you don't really eat into your holiday pay that much. The downside is being a short week, nothing's open. <laughs> so you try and, like, you, you've got a two day backlog of projects you've got to do that you've got to wait for the holidays to close so you can go and get the stuff. So it's uh, sort of been a little counterproductive. I have managed to, uh, and I was showing. Um, so you're having a nice rest by mowing the lawn, chopping down the trees. Uh, that's on the weekend. I've got palm trees to cut down. So that should be fun. Yay! Don't um, knock down the fence. I have uh, managed Again. to finally start to make a bit of a an actual... What's that orange thing? Monstrosity. So this is my, this is my uh, FL Sun Delta um, printer, 3D printer. Uh, there's the print head up there. And it's got... Uh, it's running... You can see the little uh, Raspberry Pi W back there running the print server. Raspberry uh, Octa print. Um, and so that's my 3D printer. And then I've got like a USB powered hub there, and my and a hundred USB keys. And there's my vinyl cutter down there. And yeah, I printed a, I printed a uh, USB holder, an SD card holder, and well, apparently it's not big enough, so I need to print <laughs> more, more uh, things for thumb drives, but. Uh, the one thing that I did learn is that I bought a power board specifically with a USB power hub in it because ah, nice. the internal power supply won't drive anything. The pie. <laughs> so, yeah, I uh, bought a Raspberry Pi branded power adapter in the end because uh, everything I had was USB adapters, even the high power Apple ones and Samsung ones, and nothing was enough to be able to power Raspberry Pi 3B. Plus. Yeah, well, this is the. I, I, everyone. I got the Pi W. It's the tiniest. It's. it's well, well, that's an Arduino Uno, right? And it's. It's like. Take the bottom third off that, and that's how big it is. Yep. Um, and it's got wireless built in, but it's a one gig processor, um, single core. The original Raspberry Pi was an 850 meg processor, so. This Octoprint, people are saying, oh, if you're going to run time lapses or webcams, it's not powerful enough. Well, I'm not, and it's effectively only running a, a web server, so it is powerful enough for that, and it's like you know, $25 or something. And yeah. if I want to want to run a time lapse, I'll just use that 
webcam software I was just using then. Yep. And, and do it that way. Like it's just there. It's not like it's at the other end of the house, you know. So. Yep. But uh, I finally one thing with Delta printers, if anybody buys a Delta three D printer, I, I strongly recommend them for their their speed is unbeaten. The Cartesian style printers don't even come close. But the setup, the <laughs> the tuning, the time and energy and effort to getting it to print properly is just ridiculous. Um, I've used almost an entire spool, one kilo spool of PLA filament to finally get to a point where I can actually print something that actually does what it's supposed to do, you know, screw the lid on and, and whatever. Um, now that it's calibrated, it, it's it's fine, yep. but... The calibration. That's great. Mr. T and I are like, okay, we'll both print the same thing. Ready, set, go. Mr. T's like, I'm finished. And I'm like, well, I've got four hours left. Yeah, that was funny. I can't remember what we are printing. We are doing something like that. And yeah, I, I printed it. We did my little heart trinket box that oh, I did that's for right, my mum. It took me like six hours or something. And you printed it out in half an hour. I printed the box, the lid and the handle in like an hour and 45 or something yeah. for the whole lot. <laughs> Insane. And that was before I had it calibrated. <laughs> that was straight, that was straight out of the box, untouched. And it all fit, all locked together. Yeah, and that was um, at like thirty millimeters a second or something. Um, I've got it bumped up to a hundred now. Um, Mine does forty a, on a, it's it's slow precise setting, and it still doesn't. Somehow well, you're thirty millisecond, and yeah. my forty millisecond is slower. But so you got to remember, I've got with the way the delta works with the three arms it's 30 millisecond by three so even at 30 millisecond it's 90 millisecond so it moves three times faster even on a slow setting so on my first layer i've got it set to uh 60 millisecond is my first layer to make it stick yep and then it's 100 after that and if i want precision i drop it down to like 50 but i haven't got it that exact yet i don't so I'm not think i can do 100 but i tried no, it on yeah. 60 once and it was rough it worked. It was rough. <laughs> yeah. But you want something nice and smooth, do it about 40. Yeah, yeah, that's, you know, and that's the thing. Like, I would buy another one of these um, as a prototyping printer. I'd put a point, instead of a 0.4 nozzle, I'd put like a 0.7 or 0.8 mil nozzle and run three millimeter filament and just plow through at 150 millisecond and just get your, your prototype, your, your initial design, yeah. see what it's like, and then work it out on the finer printer. And so, next week anyway, on to... This Week in 3D Printing. <laughs> okay, so w this is going to lead into a uh, show that we are working on. It's effectively a uh, Aussie Tech Heads uh, styled show, but it's an up late version where we basically talk about a piece of technology or a just random crap, basically, but it's still going to be based on the ATH style because we always seem to run out of... Um, time to do ATH mainly because yeah. we crap on for so long but <laughs> maybe every three or four weeks we can do a show or something we're going to do a special show that uh, that you know and we that... might end up doing ATH every four weeks too so well you might even do a bonus feature we'll just sort of do if you missed us <laughs> don't worry you'll get another hit now speaking of which have you actually introduced a show yet <laughs> what show Oh, there's people watching this. Hey, yes, you and um, you were taking this week off holidays. Mine was last week, so I went up to Briz Vegas, saw Mr. T, saw Mr. Glenny Goodman for the first time ever. That was at uh, Comic-Con or something, wasn't it? No, Rabina Shopping uh, Centre. No, but wasn't Went to Supernova before yeah. that. Supernova, yeah. Yeah, had a great time there. My daughter met a couple of people who do voice character voices for um, Overwatch. Oh, so we had a good chat to them. That was a lot of fun and took a lot of photos of people. There was a guy dressed up as Yondu. See, and the, uh, my daughter got a photo of him. I did too. And we just had so much fun as we usually do. And we were both in costume. I was dressed up as Silent Bob. And she had a Naruto outfit on. Part of her Naruto outfit, she didn't, couldn't be bothered going the full Naruto like we did in Sydney earlier in the year. But it was still a lot of fun. And then... Went to escape rooms in Bris Vegas. That was the most fun we ever had on a holiday. They lock us in a room and you got 45 minutes to undo all the puzzles and figure out combination locks and decipher codes and stuff. And we did the, the wine cellar first. That was a lot of fun. And we broke out of there. And then um, next one we did was the asylum. 
where they put you in a hospital type room where they do uh, secret operations on patients and lobotomies and stuff and you have to try and escape from there which was really cool and then um, we had so much fun the next day we're going to go out down the Goldie and check out the theme parks but we're like no let's go back and do some more of these themes so we went back to the escape room and we did um, the uh, oh, the Covenant and uh, that was a spooky scary one with a lot of skulls and stuff and then um what was the last one we did we were in jail and had to escape before i got put in an electric chair and got electrocuted but my daughter did that to me anyway so that was a lot of fun but we escaped uh yeah that, that one we, we actually escaped pretty much on time the others they gave us a little bit extra time because there was only two of us so we got an extra 10 minutes but i'd saw saw on um, reddit some guy had said that he and five other friends did the wine cellar one, which was our first one. And he said, even though they're seasoned escape room people, they only had like 30 seconds to go before they were running out of time and just managed to escape it. But the two of us managed to do it with about 10 minutes over. So we were quite happy with that. We've got a lot of photos and a lot of fun. And Yeah, I highly recommend anyone want to try it. I uh, see they've got them in Newcastle, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, everywhere. So give it a go. I was talking to one of the ladies at the radio station I work at, and she's going to one in, um, or maybe a few of them, in France next year. Going to take some friends over to Paris, try out the escape rooms, and have a lot of fun there too. So everyone yeah, get into it. It's awesome. I remember uh, years ago when I was living in Melbourne, there was uh, Dracula's... Um, Castle things, Castle uh, had the you know they do the put on the shows and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, Dracula's Castle. I've been there and, on the Gold Coast. They got one. Yeah, they had one in Melbourne. And um, on the back of that, and we we'd been there a dozen times. We used to go there for a work party once a month. And then we're sitting at a different table. We normally sat to them, looking around like, "What's over there?" And I wandered over just between the shows. I'm like, "Escape room? What the hell's escape room?" This is going back like you know ninety nine two thousand. Yeah. And uh, wandered in there, and there's, you know, beware, do not enter, for, you know, you shall stay here forever. <laughs> oh, this looks interesting, wandered in. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> what do I do? <laughs> and the funny thing, it wasn't advertised, there's no sign, like, it was just there, and apparently, oh, right. it just, they randomly just entrapped people who wanted to <laughs> out if you uh this is the not... stupid people trap <laughs> guess who yeah, went, yeah. walked into it yeah that's right exactly it turns out if you actually make it through it within a certain time i don't know what the time was but you actually ended up on the stage and you could actually perform with some of the as oh, an extra nice. with some of the stage guys and if you didn't well tough yeah <laughs> We went to Dracula's Castle on the Gold Coast. It was really good. They put you in a mini roller coaster that takes you up and down into the uh, main room and then you hop out there and go sit at your table and people bring you food and wine and watched a really good show there. My girlfriend at the time got completely sploshed because there were people at the table and they're like, oh, we got this bottle of Brown Brothers wine, but we don't really want to drink it. Do you want it? She's like, Brown Brothers? Oh, my God, yes. There goes yes, the bottle. <laughs> Carry out of the car. Well, should we do some news, Mr. T? Probably should um, introduce the show. we for 15 minutes. And tell people where the, what, 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 what we're doing. We did that at the start. That was when I called no. you Mr. Robinson. Did you? Okay. Well, <laughs> I can Mr. T. All right. The, like, we've been streaming prior to the show to test stuff, and it's been perfect. And the second you said Aussie Tech Ed's the entire thing cut off for like 30 seconds yeah <laughs> i did the so whole thing know, in there I don't know what you did. okay well there you go <laughs> um yeah i guess we probably should do something constructive you, mean to start? So <laughs> you go for it you're in the terrible run of form it's been over the last year it probably shouldn't be that surprising that facebook waited until the highly anticipated report on russian interference in the 2016 u.s presidential election to deliver some bad news while just about every reporter was poring over the document, Facebook uploaded a blog post from March indicating that passwords had been exposed, stored as readable text as opposed to securely encrypted, for hundreds of millions of Facebook users and thousands of Instagram users. It had a new paragraph in the middle of the post today indicating that a lot more Instagram users were affected than originally thought. We now estimate that this issue impacted millions of Instagram users. We'll be notifying these users as we did the others. 
Our investigation has determined these stored passwords were not internally abused or improperly accessed. Facebook said it would notify the impacted users and there's no evidence that anyone within or outside Facebook had access to the passwords. But still those users and perhaps anyone else might want to change their password or enable two-factor authentication just to make sure and that's never a bad idea anyway. I've got yes. two-factor on mine. What about you? Pain in the ass. Hate it. <laughs> Every time you log into no. something, is this you? Is this you? Tell us. Like, we've got it on our work stuff as well. Like, we use Vend and we use Zero and stuff like that. And and it's all got 2FA two, two on it, which is fine if you've got the work mobile next to you and somebody doesn't have it 35 k's away on the road and has no mobile signal. <laughs> you know, like, the theory is sound. I get it, and I don't have a problem with it. The problem is, in reality... A lot of the time, it's just not practical. Yep. If you want to do a tool, okay, fine. Send me, you know, give me a... a one of those well, RSA uh, tokens. Here's, here's I had one of them for PayPal. Yeah, it was good. It was a credit card right. size shape one that had a OLED screen, so it only ever used the battery when you press oh, the okay. button to get the new number. And I kept that in my wallet. That was fantastic. I, I mean... Yeah, but once again, you've got that. So if you left the store, for example, nobody else could use that. Or Whereas, if I left my keys on the back of the car and drove off and nobody would do that, would they? That would be a silly thing that. to do. Stupid thing to do. Who does stuff like that? Um, I don't know if you remember back in the day, um, talking like late 80s, early 90s, there was a game called Stunts. <clears throat> and their anti-piracy technique was they would boot up the game at the start of the game they would say enter word six on page 45 of the instruction manual yeah like so you 64 to, ones did that yeah so you had to have the user manual in front of you to find um the actual word you know so something like that like a randomly generated i don't know two page document and then it just goes you know give me the you know line seven page two fifth yeah. word you know and that Surely there's enough randomization in that, you know, especially if it's something you could update once a week or once a month, that whenever you chose, you could print off a new list that would update it. Yep. So if you thought there might have been a security breach, you could simply just, you know, because that can just sit on a folder on the desk, you know, and be innocuous until you actually need it. It's not something that's a big deal. But when you've got something that you want to log in on your phone, but you're logged in on the desktop, so it complains that you logged in twice, and you need to unlog from there to log into here. But because now you've logged out of here, you need to log back in with 2FA, but you can't because the device isn't here. It, uh, it, it, look, for most people, I guess it's probably fine. Um, but in a lot of situations, it really is painful. Did uh, you see where it, Google was talking about recently a usb device that you can scan your thumbprint or something and it'll upload it through chrome to verify if that's you i did um i did sort of i thought it was just using the um the scanners on the phones i mean for desktop this for desktop yeah yeah but i thought you actually scanned it with with oh, your phone then then but you would need your phone as well but if you had a desktop usb plugged in anybody in the office who had their finger Oh uh, yeah, that's right. The mobile fingerprints again. Yeah. Well, a lot of cash registers use that now. Oh, okay. Um, one I of know the... my daughter's laptop does. Mm. Yeah, a lot of, like a lot of them had wristbands. Yep. Um, but the problem is, if you're working in like retail or hospitality, for example, you're behind a bar and you, you either they're not waterproof to start with, so they get destroyed straight away. Or what most people end up doing is getting their shits because someone's left theirs behind or forgotten it, so they just tape one to the register and just leave it stuck there anyway. Yeah. So. <laughs> They have introduced the finger, fingerprint scanners now, which um, the, is, you know, generally you can sacrifice a little bit of accuracy for a little bit of usability, yep. or you can be really, really super pedantic and, and sacrifice a bit of usability. But generally in most environments, you know, 75% matches is, is good enough. You know, if something's that super critical, somebody wants to steal it, a fingerprint scanner is not <laughs> secure anyway. You know, it's not that hard. As Mythbusters prove, you literally just fo take a photo of their finger, photocopy it, and you can use it to open a yep. fingerprint scan. Like, it's not something you want to rely on for 100% security. But yeah, absolutely, if it's something that you want to do um, and you want it to be relatively secure, say you've got a server in the office, you don't want anybody except a couple of people to touch, it's good enough for that, and most people aren't going to bother mucking around with it, you know. 
And since we're on the subject, I might as well keep going. Facebook said on Wednesday it may have unintentionally uploaded email contacts of 1.5 million new users since May 2016. And what seems to be the latest privacy-related issue... Facebook never has privacy-related issues. Or security ones, right? In March, Facebook... Well, according stopped- to them, anyway. <laughs> In March, Facebook had stopped offering email password verification as an option for people who signed up for the first time. There were cases in which email contacts of people were uploaded to Facebook when they created their account. We estimate that up to 1.5 million people's email... This is your whole address book or email contacts in whatever phone and things you've got. Just accidentally got uploaded to Facebook servers somehow. All your friends and relatives and that chick you got on the side and stuff that you don't want anyone to know about. These contacts were not shared with anyone and we are deleting them, said Facebook, adding that users whose contacts were imported will be notified. The underlying glitch has been fixed, according to a company statement. 87 gig, apparently. I believe and trust Facebook 100%. There's no problem. You know what the funny thing is? If you type in Facebook email dump story, an article comes way back from 2016. Mm Mm-hmm. From when it Try have I been pwned dot com and see what yeah. you can find. Yeah, um, yeah, that's it. The problem with that, okay, it only tells you what sites have had vulnerabilities, and if your I think it's email account is on those lists, that doesn't mean you actually have been compromised or your, your data has been used. It just means potential for yeah. that to happen. So don't. Like freak out if you if it pop and just almost everybody's going to have at least one or two hits on that site, even if it's something silly like Adobe or a Microsoft breach. That that you know, I don't know. I don't know of anybody. Maybe there are people, but I don't know of anybody who's relatively active online yeah. who doesn't get at least one or two hits up on that site. Um, my mother-in-law doesn't, but she literally uses Gmail and Facebook. Yeah. At the same time, um, and and actually manages to get viruses on a regular. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but yeah, so like it, I, th- it's a great site to go to, and it's really informative, and it's good to know where you've been breached. But yeah, eh, don't necessarily freak out just because you have been and, bre- and a good way Everybody's to avoid Everybody's there, even if you want to use the same password for all those sites, or not your main ones, but say weird ones like Adobe and. Yahoo and you know random sites it's you don't generally com use. Dot com dot au. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, <laughs> do not click here. dot com and stuff like that. Um, set up an email account that's not your primary one. Uh, set up. You're like, I, I have three main emails. I've got my normal Gmail one, which is my usual day to day one, where all the Aussie tech head ones get forwarded, and you know all that sort of happens. I've got a spam account where I know for a fact that a website I'm going to sign up to say, hmm, I don't know, Kogan is going to send you 4 million emails a day. <laughs> so I give them that email address Bing to shut Lee. them up. Yeah, or, you know, any, pretty much anything to do with online sales. Um, Madeinchina.com, yep. uh, Alibaba. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but then I have another account so things that I use occasionally, but not very often, like my Adobe, like my um, Focusrite, like you know, you you printed like your HP and your brother, so, so like that, where you kind of sign up just so they've got a record of what you've got, and it's easier than trying to find it all the time. Yeah. But you don't really use that much. I have a th- another email account that I just use that for, and they're usually relatively low security sites anyway. So worst case scenario, all those sites have got the same password. You know, they're not critical sites. There's no damage can be done by accessing my Adobe site. What are you going to do? Download my Photoshop. You know, like, big deal. (laughs) You know, like, there's no data in those sites that can be a problem. So I have all those sites put aside. I run all the same password on all those sites, and it's not a massive deal if a data breach occurs. Yep. You know. Um, And just on that, too, with emails... Have pick pick a email client whether you choose Gmail or Outlook.com or you know Hotmail whatever you choose but pick one non-service provider allocated email and even if you choose to have you know Fred at OptusNet.net forward those to your normal email address so if you do want to change providers you don't have to spend six months backing up your email address and then tell everybody you've got a new address. Yeah. 
you know. I never used any of my ISP ones for like the last 10, 15 years. <laughs> no, the only things that get sent to my ISP ones are my ISP. They send bills and Mine probably whatever. do. I never look into it, no. so I wouldn't know. Well, I've got more auto-forwarded. They all go to my Gmail. So <laughs> I, just, I just set them up to auto-forward to my Gmail. Yeah, I started doing that you to know. everything. And um, I've actually had to start doing it with our... With our um, you my, up, my, um, authorize your Gmail to change the from yeah. to one of the other addresses and it'll send it yeah. as that as that address well that's what I do at work because I've actually see I, my uh, inbox at work tends to get rather large very quickly yep. and the boss is sick of paying for server upgrades <laughs> to keep increasing the hard drive space I think it's I think I'm up to 40 or 50 gig in my inbox at the moment at work so I, I set up a gmail account for work and i just automatically forward and forward and delete everything out of there That's straight into the gmail one <laughs> gmail is your archive pretty much yeah so and Personal it's good because i have it set up my map or whatever i can just do it all through there yep <clears throat> so all righty you got for us mr robinson <laughs> do i have to call you mr r now <laughs> You can call me whatever you want because I just don't care. Speaking of Facebook, because why not? It's Facebook, Facebook bashing night, I guess. Um, Facebook, okay, so we all know the Christchurch shooting thing happened and then we all know that every media and social media outlet in the world went into meltdown trying to delete the videos before and people the got Australian hold of Australian government making laws and going to send Mark Zuckerberg to jail if he doesn't fix it. No, oh, it's it's and no anybody like if you download a copy of it and put it on your computer and no, have I don't a copy. mean that one specifically. Sorry, I mean future ones. Oh, they've yeah, said oh, yeah. if it's not blocked, then Mark's going to jail. But with this one, if you have a copy of it, you can still go to jail. Yep, <coughs> because it picks up all the faults. But anyway, um, so basically, but what happened this one? So in the twenty four hours after the Christchurch shooting, Facebook removed one and a half million videos worldwide. Um, but a month later, and this is all supposedly automatic, supposedly through an algorithm, all right? Yep. But a month later, footage was still circulating. Now, apparently, the same AI that re had actively deleted one and a half million copies in 24 hours had a hard time detecting the footage. Yep. Over the rest of the month. They worked perfectly fine for 24 hours. And then suddenly didn't Stop work working. anymore. Well, they're going to have to fix it now or Scott Morrison's going to give him some very strong words. The company has since come under fail for failing to... Because anyone cares about what he says. <laughs> for failing to remove the videos fast enough. And the EU is considering legislation that could be social media platforms that don't remove terrorist content within an hour of notification. Oh, well, that's where Scott so, got the idea from. Yeah. So basically what they're saying is um, that... We can't have freedom of expression or, you know, freedom to view what we want. We can't have an open internet, given that that's the whole point of the internet. Was. Um, <laughs> Everyone's cracking down on everything now. Oh, See, in the yeah. EU now, you're going to have to email your ISP to say, yes, I am over 18, would like to watch porn, please, because they're just going to blanket block it through everybody in the UK. So this is where Tor clients and VBMs are about to have a windfall. But They're the going to get too, rich. Oh, yeah. The other thing is, too, there's a... Just to put this into perspective, you've you got to remember that everyone complains when Facebook and Twitter and YouTube and whatever make changes and they do stuff. The thing is, you're using it under their terms and conditions. Yep. They can do whatever the hell they want, and you whinging, bitching, complaining about it won't fix the problem. There are options... Um, the one I use primarily, and I use it probably more than Facebook now, is called Minds.com. Mm -hmm. um, and it is... That's where um, you're uploading uh, crypto videos. Yeah, uh, among other things. And it's, um, it's open source uh, using... It's high-level encrypted, but it's open source. And But the main thing about it is it's peer-to-peer -peer social media. There is no servers. This works based on the fact that everybody who visits the sites transmits and receives and transmits and copies and duplicates and moves the data around. And you can so, uh, pay people using cryptocurrency too if you like their stuff. 
Yeah, I was about to log in with my password, then I'll just change. Um, <laughs> it's speaking. ABC123. We know that, Mr. Not Robinson. Far Not far off it. But yeah, so you can, so when you're logged in as somebody, you can pick a story, like InfoWars, for example, have been completely banned off Facebook, but their website, their InfoWars on here has actually got like four times the amount of followers they had on Facebook anyway. Um, but for example, I can go here, I can like it like you're doing Facebook, thumbs up or thumbs down. But the cool part is, um, I can re-share it in the yep. same way, but then there's actually, um, you can actually add, like you've got a wallet and you have tokens and you can, if you have a post, you can bump up that post to get more people to view it or if you, every time you like or vote or subscribe to a channel, you get more tokens yep. and then you can give somebody a token. So if they've got a story that you really like, you can actually give them a token for, for publishing the story. It's all uh, crypto. It's all cryptocurrency. It's all encrypted. There's a proper wallet. There's, it's, it's fully legit in that respect. I've been using it for a long time. Never had a drama at that end of it. But because it is all... Um, if anyone wants to give me any, any money, there's, there's my... <laughs> there's my <laughs> best. Um, but because it is all peer-to-peer -peer and open source, there is no censorship. Mm -hmm. Um and to be completely honest, I was a little scared, little scared clicking on the homepage because quite often there is a lot of porn on here. <laughs> um, but that's just part of the... So that's sense. where the UK goes now. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, I, I kind of want to be... I'm, I'm looking at the bottom of the screen before I scroll up. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got a lot of stories that you don't see. Like Infowars has a lot of information on here because they're constantly uploading stuff you don't see. Yeah. Um, Avi, who got... Um, you know, held by secu airport security and stuff. He's got the information on here. But yeah, because it's decentralized, because it's peer-to-peer, -peer, it's untouchable. The, the governments, the, they have no centralized server. They're under no obligation um, to do what they're told, basically. Yeah. Um, so, and you can upload videos and the videos are under the same thing because there's, there's no centralized server. Uh, they also have a Tor-based backend, so if you are using a Tor browser, you can still function, the page still functions and works completely anonymously that way as well. Right. So, and you see it auto-updates, so I didn't do that. It automatically, the new story came in from one of my subscriptions and it automatically pushed it to the top. Oh, yeah. So, um, basically, stop bitching about Facebook and YouTube and get rid of them and go to something like this because YouTube is dying. Um, it's a horrible thing. If you, the the way that they've now done their um, advertising algorithms, you think you're doing the right thing by watching the ads for the um, for the content creators, which is great, and, and and don't stop doing that on your regular subscribers, the ones who put out content that you enjoy. Keep watching the ads. The problem is, not all of those ads are monetized for the content creator. A lot of those ads are. Uh, monetized, but only YouTube gets the revenue from those. Ah. Um, there was a uh, guy put up a, one of the guys I follow put up a story the other day. One of his videos completely inadvertently went viral. Yep. And he went from getting, um, I can't remember what the monetary value is, but let's say he was getting $100 per 100,000 views, you know, which he wouldn't have been. It would have been less than that, but let's just say that. It would have only probably been. 20 or 30 bucks but let's just say 100 bucks for 100,000 views as the views increased and the time frame decreased so like because it went viral the views spiked in a shorter period of time yeah that number of ads he had three ads on that video the number of ads showing was up to six at its peak and the monetary value went so that the first 100,000 he got 100 bucks the next 100,000 he got 50 bucks and by the time it was at Ten and a half million or whatever it ended up with, he got like a thousand bucks all up out of that video. So YouTube is a dying platform. Um, new content creators have no incentive at all to create content because there is no ad revenue unless you have a hundred subscribers, a hundred thousand channel views, and X amount of likes. Lots of and likes. yeah, you know, so it's almost impossible. It's it's not worth your time and effort basically investing in a new channel now. Um, and a lot of the money you earn, you don't get to keep anyway. 
Uh, How many videos have we've like done? That. We've never got a cent from YouTube. We've done so many for like 10 years. My total view count is over uh, 10 and a half million, I think, yep. if, over the past 10 years or whatever it is. Yep. And I have earned $152 or something. I've never got anything. You know, you, be, you shot yourself in the foot. <laughs> I didn't but, do... Um, it was... <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, I'm, all my videos are monetized, yep. and some of them have got hundred, six, and seven hundred thousand views on them, and I've got you know ten or twelve dollars off those videos. Yeah, and yet you get people who have ten thousand views a video and are successfully working full time at YouTube. So, yep. but yeah, so YouTube's not very healthy. Um, there is another couple of our sites that you can use. There's um, one that uh, I'll have to go through my Gmail and find it. another one I trialed. Uh, they were trying to uh, real video, yep. they could real dot video, um, which weren't a bad site, uh, but they ended up getting mass amount of um, takedown notices and stuff. Just and that's the other thing with YouTube. The um, the algorithms take down everything all the time. Oh, the the content co the content matching and the algorithm takedowns is just becoming absolutely out of control. It's getting to the point where it's literally impossible to put a video up without getting some sort of demonetization or takedown notice. Well, even now. Leo Laporte was getting that on his own shows. Yeah, didn't have anything <clears throat> copyrightable or anything. It's just him talking to people, and they're like, "Copyright gone." There's a, a guy I can never remember his name, but I occasionally stumble across his his vlogs. It's literally him walking around with a camera for you know, 15, 20 minutes. Yep. And he gets copyright strikes. Yeah. He's like, I'm walking around in an empty warehouse. <laughs> What's copyright about that? <laughs> what? Huh? So, there yeah. was some dust in that corner. <laughs> you copyrighted dust. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Just watch me. So basically, my, my, yeah, the moral of the story is get away from Facebook, get away from YouTube, get away from Twitter because they are dying platforms. They're all horrible cesspools anyway. <sighs> well, there's that. <laughs> so, um, but, but one thing YouTube supposedly is doing, yep. and this is a big supposedly because they haven't, they come out and said it, and then they kind of deny that they said it, even though they actually said it and it's still up on their, <laughs> on their um, page. But anyway, apparently they're supposed to be labeling videos that are f that are real news versus fake news yep my question is how do they determine real news versus fake news because if they go off the cnn and abc and all that they're going to be labeled as real news and if you go off Infowars and uh al jazeera they're going to be labeled as fake news so what they're basically saying is if it says fake chances are that's the one you should watch yep <laughs> I don't know. Do the opposite. Some sad news, Mr. T. Samsung will delay the retail launch of its Galaxy Fold smartphone. Uh, I wanted one. Surprising. For an unspecified period of time after reviewers discovered problems with the display. Last week, reviewers started posting problems with the device on Twitter, but as of Friday, the company did not know the root cause of the screen defects. According to Patrick Moorhead, founder of More Insights and Strategy, you said he was in direct co to contact with the company. About 50 units of the $1,980 US or Australian 2,777 foldable device have been sent for review to journalists, analysts and bloggers in the United States ahead of a planned April 26 launch. It's not immediately clear how many of the devices were defective. Four units sent to journalists and a Twitter, a YouTube personality contained problems, according to posts on Twitter. Samsung declined to comment beyond a prepared statement. To fully evaluate this feedback and run further internal tests, we have decided to delay the release of the Galaxy Fold. We plan to announce the release date in the coming weeks. A Samsung spokesperson said on Monday, Samsung also postponed media events for the device planned for this week in Hong Kong and Shanghai. Now, here's the my problem. I want to try one of these foldable devices. The only thing I'd be able to try is Samsung because that would be with Telstra, which I've got a quick upgrade account with at the moment. Xiaomi foldable, I'm really excited about, but 
Nobody in Australia is going to sell that, except maybe Kogut and Chris, I, but then oh, I'd have to buy it outright for like $3,000. <laughs> is a couple of people who do sell their phones outright, but yeah, they're, they're expensive. Yeah. Um, but I can't get it on a plan. It, the only thing would be the Samsung foldable. Yeah, the plan's going to be like 500 bucks a month anyway. I mean, the, la- the latest iPhone on, the t- on Telstra was 100 and something for their base plan. That's if you pay for phone plan. That's what I mean. Like if you yeah, if you get the you get the the phone and the plan it was like a hundred and something odd bucks, and that was only a twelve hundred dollar phone. Yeah. So the, your cheapest plan is going to be two hundred and fifty bucks a month anyway. <laughs> you just need a company that pays that for you. You'd be better off getting something like your Surtigy Easy Pay, buying the the Xiaomi one, putting it on a two year payment plan. You'd pay less. Because you don't pay interest on that if you pay the minimum repayments. That's pretty cool. So, what did we say? It was $3,000. 2777 Oh, so great. three grand divided by 24. So you, you're going to pay hundred and less than 125 bucks a month. Well, if we go, okay, yep. 2800 divided by, by 24. You're paying 100 and, 115 bucks a month yep. to, to have the phone outright as opposed to... It's going to have to be 200 bucks a month if you give it the plan, surely. Yeah. So, that's still not... I mean... But we're not going to be trying uh, any foldable phones for a long time, are we? Well, according to the uh, Engadget phone that they received, um, the Galaxy Fold developed a bulge that ultimately broke the conspic- in a conspicuous number of pixels. Yep. Uh, they think that debris got under the screen, given that the phone is supposed to be... Um, uh, where are we giving the phone is supposed to be waterproof and dust or water resistant and dust proof. That should never have happened. And then using a plastic to make it foldable, it's now plastic instead of glass, which means that you look at it wrong and it scratches. Well, the other problem is that it's got a protective plastic film on the top, which a lot of reviewers thought was one of those you know, you buy a TV and it's got a plastic film on it, really? so you peel that well, off. I'm sorry. So they're like, we'll just rip that off the... Oh, the display is now screwed. (laughs) So now the review and non-review devices are coming out with a do not remove this protective film notification that they should have had in the first place. Yeah. (laughs) I kind of... Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, look, it's... It honestly, it's pure geek cred. There, there is no practical reason to need a folding phone. No, I would. And, I like. I like my phone, but I'd like to be able to have a bigger screen to use. But I don't want to buy the pluses and stuff. I don't want I, a S10 I, plus. It's too big. I would be for a flip phone, meaning it's a normal phone that works the way it does now. Except it does like a like the old. I think it was the Ericsson did it. They did a flip and slide screen that gave you a keyboard underneath it. Oh, okay. But instead of having a keyboard, have a second screen. Well, the Motorola having a foldable screen that work is it a flip phone style? Uh, yeah, but it was it flipped like clamshell. Yes. So, but I was thinking more the the screens could be folded flat effectively, and it would slide. But instead of clamshelling like that, yeah, it would. It would slide up, so you still got your outside screen. Oh, okay. And then as it folds, instead of clamshelling so that we have to open and close it, it would fold up like that, so you have yep. two exposed screens. As you talk to like LG, the... they got a roll up TV screen. <laughs> like a blind. It's a whole, it uh, gets... it's a whole back, to the, back to the Future um, view. Yeah. And you can put on 20 TV shows and watch them all at once. <laughs> uh, I can't. I don't, I don't, I don't want to watch any of them at all. <laughs> So, um, that's the Facebook one. I did that one. So, I don't know how many people have heard of the Brave browser. Yeah, one of my friends was saying to me, oh, I use the Brave browser. I was like, how do you even know about that one? He said, I've been using it forever. Yeah, look, it's not a bad... um, I was talking to Glenn about it when I met him. Okay, yeah, I have it. Uh, I don't use it that often. Um, I've probably still got it installed I, somewhere. Yeah, I, it's installed. I use it occasionally. It basically, it, it does things like it um, cuts out ads and <laughs> does it run no script or has the option to run no script or something? And yeah, I mean, it does you yeah, know, some it's pretty good cool stuff. A lot of privacy settings in there and blocks cookies and stuff that you don't want it to have third party yeah. cookies. Um, but obviously, 
content creators and websites are complaining because they're losing revenue from ads. Yep. So what they're doing is they're, uh, when you now allow ads, when you opt in for the ads on the website instead of opting out, they're actually going to pay you a certain percentage. So let's say they, they don't have a um, ads that give you a 70% cut of the ad revenue through crypto tokens. So if they get you know 10 cents on a click, you're going to get 7 cents of that to come to you and the advertiser is going to get 3 cents, which it's going to screw up the... It, to a point, it's going to screw up the ad revenue and stuff for the provider, but the amount of like i checked our logs a couple of days ago at work and i think i've had out of the few hundred thousand visits we've had to our website i think i've literally had like three from the brave browser so yeah while it is a decent chunk of ad revenue it's such a small percentage and it's never going to hit mainstream like yeah. As good a browser it is, and you know, as useful it is with the features it has, even offering Us this, are going to be the only ones who know about it. Yeah, and in reality, it's going to be such a small percentage of the population, and you're not going to use it on your phone. You're just going to keep using Chrome or whatever your phone comes with. You know, like it's it's not going to be your day to day browser. You're probably still going to use Chrome or Firefox or, or Opera or something like that as your day to day browser anyway. Yeah. Um. So. Maxthon. I used to use a Maxthon browser that was cool back in the day. Yeah, I haven't heard of that one for a while, but yeah. Netscape Navigator Gold. <laughs> but the win. <laughs> still works. I downloaded it the other day just for <laughs> just for something to do. And yeah, it actually still works perfectly fine. Has a hard time with some of the, the, the CSS and stuff, but it works. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so that's something interesting. Um, you know, if you, if you want to um, potentially, you know, well make browsing especially if you're browsing there's some websites oh i don't know like engadget for example um <laughs> that have really heavily added web pages like they've got the at least, too. You know, four or six ads per page plus the ad that plays before the video and you know you know so what's guess, the worst you're scrolling down the screen suddenly this ad goes pushes out your yeah. content oh, fills up yeah. the screen like look at that and you scroll it and the whole ad goes up <laughs> That's worse on a mobile when now they're doing that. And what was really starting to annoy me, they're putting up um, promotion pages, which they've always done, but they'll send you to the website that is the page, but then they'll auto-load and auto-forge you to another website that's just full of ads. Yeah. And then every time you go back, it forwards you back to that ad page again. I so don't go to, to those websites ever again. If you use that on your domain, that's it. You're on yeah, my blacklist. Yeah, exactly. We, I mean, need, we need to have somebody write a Chrome plugin, blacklist websites, and you go somewhere that has the stupid ads and you just click blacklist. So the next time you've forgotten about that website, and you, oh, I want to read that news article, and you click on it, it goes, warning, this thing is going to send you ads. Find it somewhere else. You're like, okay, I'll go to Reuters or something. And the funny thing is, you put it in the comments and say, what the hell are you playing at and why do you want to piss off all your users? Yep. And I delete your post. <laughs> It's like, it's see, okay. I was looking up news stories for this show tonight, and I was on itnews.com.au, and a few of the times I go, oh, this is like an interesting story, and it's like, ha, this is premium content. How would you like to give us money oh, for yeah. it? And I went to the the main headline, select that, right click, go search on Google, close down IT News, and it came up on Reuters exactly the same article. I'm like, oh, I'll read it there, and I can use it on the show. So. This monetizing doesn't really work that well. Yeah, it's... Wow, that's loaded the complete wrong page. Sorry, I was, I was loading a web page for a story and it's loaded... I Speaking of forwarding you to random domains... <laughs> um, yeah, that's it. Like, it's... Um, I, don't, I don't understand what... Why... And some of them are reputable... Yeah. You know, websites. I, I mean, here's the other problem. It's like now that now that we've got 20 streaming platforms, everybody's got their exclusive content. 
piracy yeah. is now resurging again because everyone's going screw signing up to hulu and stan and netflix and right. this and that now disney's going to take all their stuff off netflix and have it only on the disney and the bbc is going to do all the bbc stuff only on a bbc and you're going to have 50 accounts you're like well i'll just go back to the pirate bay because that works the same for this i mean hi yeah. you're a lovely website probably but if I have to pay you a subscription per month and I have to pay Sydney Morning Herald a prescription per month and I have to pay the financial review prescription per month, there's too many subscriptions and, and I just don't have that much time and money. And I'm not going to read you religiously every single day. I just yeah. want that one or two articles now. And it's not even that. It's the fact that back. I can copy the headline or copy the first paragraph, yep. paste it into Google and get 47 other results that's free to go to. Yeah. So not only have you not got the click view on that page, you don't have the ad revenue you potentially would have had had the page had been free. And you forced me away from you. And I'll go, I'll go to something like slash dot or Reddit where somebody summarized the whole thing anyway. So yeah, uh, that's uh, I don't understand the the mindset. Good it's, luck with your monetizing though. Good on no, you for trying. Just said it's the same with Disney and all that, like pulling you know stuff off Netflix and pulling stuff off Foxtel and whatever just to have on their own channel now it's like what that that doesn't if you want to stream marvel you're going to have to get a disney account yeah you Which stream I'm not going pixar to you're going to have to have a disney account that's where everybody wants to go that's why they okay. bought all of them to lock you into their streaming platform there was a movie a few years ago it was a war movie i can't for the life of me think what it's called at the moment but the, it was a female um uh producer or director um and they she said no this won't be online i'm gonna we're gonna kill it so only people can go to the cinema and watch it i don't want anybody seeing anything about it and they hired a team of a few hundred people to scour the internet to find torrents and find all the where this video was their opening weekend revenue worldwide was in the hundreds of thousands of dollars yeah because people actively refused to go and see it because they're like well had I have watched a crappy low quality version or you know, I and enjoyed that, I would have gone and watched the good one. But I can't you've denied me the access to watch a crappy low quality version. Cam's heavy gonna... use. Yeah. You know, and, and this is Never the thing seen. that the industry doesn't understand because the industry is still stuck in the sixties. That if I watch something on because we we have a site, uh, we use movies dot do and it's got everything on it and technically it's a paid subscription so it's not illegal yeah. um and you do often get cam stuff on there now if i have the option to watch that and the and the say the latest i don't know the latest marvel, marvel in game in avengers in game so say that was out and i watched it and it was a cam version so it's a low quality version and it was watchable you know and not great but watchable or if the movie studio was smart and released a 360p or 480p version of that video yep. leaked it onto the internet so that you could watch it in a low quality and go that's actually not bad and you go to their website and you go hey look you can watch this in full hd for 50 cents yeah i'd go yeah hell yeah i'll watch that I'd pay five bucks you know and i'd go well even at 50 cents if yep. they complain that there's what game of thrones was torrented 27 million times or something apparently okay well let me watch it for 10 cents and you've just made 2.7 million dollars yep <laughs> because every single one of those people who more torrented it would pay 10 or 20 or 50 cents yep. to watch it in hd Something's and watch it than now. nothing you know, they just don't understand that concept they don't understand how the internet works well my friend's wife went and saw avengers end game last night and then she's like, are you going this weekend? I'll come on again because it was such a mov good movie. I'll watch it again. She could have seen it on cam. Thought that was yeah. good. Go out to the cinema and watch it again. You watch it twice at the cinema. You watch it once at home, once at the cinema. Yeah. I mean, look at something like, um, I don't know, pick a cult classic, Rocky Horror or Back to the Future or How the Dark or, you know, something that's yeah. no, probably not Back to the Future. It's a bit more mainstream, but something that's a bit obscure that's not really easy to find. Even on a lot of torrent sites don't have it. But the people who watch it love it and will continue to watch it. Yep. So I go around to a mate's place and we've got nothing to do. And we're like, oh, let's watch a movie. Uh, oh, I don't want to watch that. Oh, I want to watch this. No, Can't don't watch have it, it anywhere. Give me the option to pay 50 cents to go, I want to watch How the Duck. 
you know. And I and don't want a monthly subscription to Hulu yeah. to watch it. I just want to watch it once. We're going to watch Amazon it tonight. Prime or... Give me a 24-hour pass for 50 cents. Let me watch it a couple of times because we're going to watch it once now. We're going to start drinking halfway through it and then we're going to watch it once when we get You've drunk. You've got my credit card and PayPal details now. You're going to be happy with that because if you put something else up there for 50 cents, I'll be back tomorrow. Yeah, and that, that's... that's all dime we're... the hell out of me. Go for yeah. it. I mean, that's how spare parts and stuff make their money. You know, they... You know, or there's there's a, a thing in retail and it's called a loss leader. Yeah. So you'll go to... Well, I'll pick on Autobahn because they're a classic at doing it. They'll go, hey, we've got car batteries and four-wheel drive batteries for 69 bucks. Yeah. Okay, well, they're pretty crappy batteries, but they're still cheap. And the thing is, they're a loss leader. They're costing them 85, 90 bucks. Yeah. Right? They're selling them for 69. But the reason they do that is you're going to go into the store. You're going to buy that battery. You're going to buy some oil. You're going to buy an oil filter. You're going to buy, you know, air filter. You're going to buy probably some, you know, car cleaning stuff you're gonna buy a couple of tools like yeah yep. so you've walked in there you've spent a couple of hundred two three four hundred dollars that you were they've, they've lost twenty dollars on the initial purchase they've then made 40 percent gp on everything else you've made so you spent 300 bucks they've made 120 odd bucks 130 bucks clear on that 300 bucks yep. take the 30 bucks off that it's cost and they've still made almost 100 bucks on your purchase so they're happy to sell that one thing cheap to to make a profit on the other stuff and it, it's exactly yes. the same principle you know if you sell it uh, apparently cheap if you sell it for 50 cents on the net and then somebody's going to spend 11 dollars to go to the cinema to watch it because it was really cool on their 50 inch so imagine how cool it's going to be on a thousand inch yeah you know, like that's just how the human brain works and for some bizarre reason movie and music industry don't understand that how many reports Everybody have else? we well, seen huh? that revenue for movie studios has increased as soon as something is available on BitTorrent? yeah the profits the shoot through the roof it, it, it happens we better a stop lot. that we don't want people giving us more money i'll never admit it because then they can't use the oh we're losing money spiel but if you look at the Seen statistics grandma in jail one of the kids you know, downloaded something yeah that was funny. The, the, and the, the irony of that whole thing is, you know, even the copyright laws on free-to-air television, the, the way the rules are written, even to this day, they haven't updated. They, they actually used to be written before VCRs became, or actually even really even when VCRs started dying out and, and set-top boxes become a thing, the laws were actually technically that you... Um, weren't allowed to record anything that was not uh, public access. So basically, unless it was on the ABC, effectively, you weren't allowed to record it. Yep. Then, the, then the rules changed to say that you can record anything you want, provided that on replay, you watch it in its entirety, including the ads, and then delete it after watching it once. Well, they hated when TiVo had the ad skip function, didn't they? They had to remove that. Well, that's our current legislation regarding piracy. So, <laughs> you know, like Foxtel are breaking their own legislation by <laughs> allowing you to fast forward through the ads and keep it on your set top box. So they're in breach of their own regulations. So what do you think? The average consumer doesn't even have a clue that there is a that's copyright. The, that's the one they caught Optus on. Optus created PVR in the cloud. And because it wasn't stored on your local device, but your account on the Optus servers in the cloud, they had yeah. it shut down. Yep. See, that's the thing. If I if I um, if I have a copy of my DVD, like say I back up my my Back to the Future collection, I put it onto my hard drives. As long as that hard drive's in my computer, and I have the DVD sitting in the storage box over there, that's legal. Yep. My DVD. You gone fuzzy, man. By the autofocus, uh, I thought it was just my eyes playing up. Um, if, <laughs> um, if that DVD gets damaged, yep. I have to legally delete that copy of the movie. By or if I lend that DVD to a friend, I have to delete that copy off my hard drive. Or if that hard drive leaves the premises, like it's in a laptop, for example, or a portable hard drive, or on a thumb drive that I lend to a friend, I must take the original copy with me. Yep. 
So when I go on the airplane and fly to the States, I have to take a crate of DVDs with me <laughs> so that I can legally watch my movies on my laptop without being pulled over by border security and being threatened to be That's locked okay. Up. You'll still get pulled over by border security no matter yeah. what. Well, <laughs> you're white so males, sure. it might not be. Assuming I'm not on the no-fly list already. <laughs> <laughs> Will Robinson might be <laughs> impersonating. Oh, yeah, great. That's all I need. Microsoft has published a support document today warning Windows 10 users that the impending May 2019 update may not install on their systems if they use external USB storage devices or SD cards. You wouldn't do that, would you, Mr. T? Huh? The OS maker cited problems with inappropriate drive reassignment as the main reason for blocking the May 2019 update. Inappropriate device reassignment is another word for we screwed up. Can occur, that? <laughs> can occur on eligible computers that have an external USB device or SD memory card attached during the installation of the May 2019 update. For this reason, these computers are currently blocked from receiving the update. The following error message will be shown for Windows 10 users where the May 2019 update has been blocked because of problematic external USB storage devices or SD cards. The error says, it's not very helpful, but it says, what needs your attention? <laughs> really? The following things need your attention to continue the installation and keep your Windows settings, personal files and apps. This PC can't be upgraded to Windows 10. Your PC has hardware that isn't ready for this version of Windows 10. No action is needed. Windows Update will offer this version of Windows 10 automatically once the issue has been resolved. Which people are like, huh? Fortunately, there's a quick and simple workaround for this issue. Unplug all the things. There you go. Microsoft recommends, recommends users remove any external USB or SD media and restart the installation update. This includes USB thumb drives, USB-based external hard drives, or SD cards inserted into card reader devices. Unless users are running Windows 10 from one of these devices, which is highly unlikely, most users will be able to work around this issue. In the long run, Microsoft plans to address the inappropriate drive reassignment issue in a future Windows 10 servicing update. Microsoft won't block the May 2019 update for all Windows 10 users, but only those running the April 2018 update, Windows 10 version 1803, or the October 2018 update, Windows 10 version 1809. Users using older versions of Windows 10 will be able to move to the May 2019 update without a problem. Okay, so two things with that. One is I just went to the website on the Microsoft website to put it up on there. Yep. However, above it, it has a massive ad on how efficient and update and user-friendly the new Windows updates all are. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you Isn't know, it ironic, that. don't you think? <laughs> um, and the other thing is this explains an issue I was having. I got for just after Christmas, so I got my in-laws uh, Intel uh, NUC, which is effectively a, a mini tiny little PC thing. It's basically it's, it's almost a laptop crammed into a bit of a plastic case. It's not a lot to it. It's, it's you know, 180 bucks or whatever it was. Just a, a basic um, yeah, basic mini PC you know, 2.8 gig processor or something. It's effectively just for running Windows. It's, that's all it is. But it has a I want to say like a 10 gig, not even. No, it's not. I think it's a 4 gig or 8 gig uh, SSD. Yeah. It's literally got Windows 10 on it, and I think it's got 900 meg free or something. Yeah. Um, now, to save room, I've put a uh, 32 gig SD because it has a built-in SD slot. Yeah. I put a 32 gig SD card in it, and everything is on that card. Yeah. Even... A lot of the Windows operating system, the desktop storage, like the desktop, um, all right. where you keep all your, you know, your user your, profile and stuff. Yeah, all the user profiles, all that sort of stuff. There's a lot of stuff. I've just edited the path in the Windows. You can, you can still do it the old-fashioned way, like you used to do back in the day, and just edit the path file, and you can tell it where Windows is. Yeah. A, a vast majority of it is across on that drive, and it refused to install that update. And yep. now I know why, because it doesn't want to, because it technically sees it as a USB um, drive. Yep. My question is, <laughs> how, 
how do I install that update? Because you just pop it out. It says here, right in the <laughs> in your read, it says because un- absolutely it. nothing could go wrong from removing that SD card. <laughs> so the same. I got a similar problem, not the same as that, but I've got a little mini laptop, and it's got like thirty mm. gig hard drive, and That's most of that's happened. used with Windows probably 16, 18 gigs or something. And then if you want to do an update, you download a 10 gig update, which expands into another 20 gigs. And then there's nowhere for the update or the expanded update to fit. You can't update Windows. So the only thing I can do is put the update onto a USB key, boot off that, wipe off the whole hard drive, SSD drive built into it and reinstall Windows from scratch. So first back up all data, then the whole thing has to get wiped every single time. Yep, so what I did with my in-laws one was I had a 2 gig, I think, recovery peti- petition. Yep. Uh, so I did a complete factory wipe and put it back to the original settings and disabled updates, and it's been perfectly fine ever since. There you go, no problem. <laughs> I don't um, need these. Up- these are not the updates you need to see. Need to, as on. I said, she does Gmail and Facebook. Yep. Like, okay. that, that's it, and I've got... Uh, AVG on there for virus scanner, and I've got a, um, I've got uh, uh, Spybot and Adware yep. on there. Like, you know, <laughs> it doesn't need Windows updates. It, it, I don't even. I mean, having said that, I don't update my. I'm still running Windows Seven, which I actually installed. Was it last weekend? Weekend before? Yeah. Um, because <laughs> Windows exploded after like three years. And the USB uh, port stopped working. Oh, among other things. I didn't realize how slow it was either until I did a fresh reinstall. But the very first thing I did as soon as I did the install, I downloaded the uh, Service Pack 2 and, you know, the required updates. Yep. And I just dis- disabled updates. And That's the it. thing is so fast, so stable, <laughs> it doesn't crash, things work, things well, install. Well, now how are you going to put on the May 2019 update? Well, it's still running Windows 7. So you won't get it anyway. Um, but that's the thing, like, my system now is twice as fast as it was with all the updates on it. It's yep. more stable, more reliable. Uh, and I'm running a firewall and a virus scanner anyway, so the updates really aren't benefiting me in any way, shape, or form. Yeah. Because I don't run Microsoft drivers for my motherboard or video card or whatever. They're all proprietary drivers anyway, so why do I need to run Windows Update? Everyone goes, oh, you have to run the updates. They fix this. No, you don't. For the vast majority of people... Doesn't matter. Like ninety nine percent of the population, the Windows updates aren't benefiting you at all. But you're gonna miss out on the latest, greatest. Mm-hmm. Corporations, yes, because there are some vulnerabilities that may affect corporations, and it's a very, very big may. It's most like of them pro- are still running on XP or seven anyway. And that's why, because they've patched them over the years. They're stable. They leave them alone. They don't touch them, and they haven't touched them in five years because they've been working perfectly. Yeah, you know, so. Um, well, we're probably just about running out of time. If you got a quick one, I was just going to say quickly the um, the new Tesla obviously has been released. The Model S and Model X get new motors and higher range. And he's uh, done what has he done? Tesla models S three X Y. Very sexy. Completely accidental. Was not intended at all. There was no thought gone. Even into though that he said that right at the start, <laughs> I'm going to make a bunch of sexy cars. <laughs> They're all going to be sexy. Um, but yeah, so there's actually they've just updated the battery packs. They've got bigger packs. Um, <clears throat> they they're, they're talking about 155 mile an hour top speed, which is kind of irrelevant, but it's the torque and the power that's increased a lot. Yep. Having the bigger motor means that the mo- it, it it doesn't work as hard doing what it does. So with the bigger battery pack and the bigger motor, you actually get uh, substantially more range than if you just got the bigger battery pack without the bigger motor. Yep. Because um, it's operating at lower power consumption to do that. And of course, you can throw the ludicrous mode on top for an extra 20 grand, which gives you like another, I don't know, 200 horsepower or something. They did a joke but, about that on Silicon Valley, did you see? Switch yeah. on ludicrous mode. No! It's like going to plaid. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, how many people are going to get that one? Um, how many people are still listening? <laughs> so, but yeah, 
I, I did a thing the other day just for the for fun. I went onto the Tesla website just to see how much the absolute base model, entry level, no accessories, cheapest you can get. Yep. I think it was three hundred and seventy five dollars a week over eight years or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, no. Only I that. I don't since want you, since you've done that now. CEO Elon Musk said during the company's autonomy day, I feel very confident predicting that there will be autonomous robo-taxis from Tesla next year. Not in all jurisdictions because we won't have regulatory approval everywhere, but uh, taxis are going to drive you around. He also had a picture recently of a steering wheel-less Tesla that yep. they're looking at bringing out. And right, yeah. he also right. said they want to make Tesla uh, electric silent leaf blowers. Well, and I mean, then he said, sense. Tesla blows, lol. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, t the, um, it's actually surprising they haven't got into basically any of that market because it's all, they're already producing the battery packs. I mean, you know. He's got a flamethrower. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not a flamethrower. One of my friends in Brisbane tried to buy one, but customs blocked it. Yeah, they don't like him apparently, and I don't know why. They're not actually illegal, but, you know. Um, I should mention, too, that uh, today is actually Anzac Day. Yes, and uh, there's the um, lest we forget uh, the. I'm trying to think who it was. I don't have the the story in front of me. They've released a. They've found a whole heap of um, new photos they've uncovered that have never seen been seen before. That have uh, um, a lot more behind the scenes stuff, you know, oh. than than just the actual the actual front of the war but i can't think i know it's on uh, news.com.au yeah <clears throat> but i can't find the story I thought <laughs> have, of course, because that's the way it always works but um yeah of course so you know always support the the vets and uh you know it's the the whole oh did yeah it's a story for another time but did you see last week that uh new zealand they, they were going to have the the whatever it is a muslim prayer at the end of the no the end of the um dawn ceremony oh okay and basically nobody was impressed about the whole thing i don't know whether it ought happened i haven't looked into it but yeah that was going to cause a lot of trouble if they did that i'm pretty sure yeah all righty thanks for listening to the <laughs> aussie tech head show broadcast weekly we can be found at facebook.com slash aussie tech heads twitter.com slash aussie tech heads and youtube.com slash aussie tech heads you can email us, Glenn, Will, or Warlock at aussietechheads.com.au. You can hear Aussie Tech Heads on aussietechradio.com. 24-7, back-to-back play of some of the best tech-related shows from around Australia and New Zealand. New shows are added every Friday. Thanks for listening, everyone, and we'll catch you the next time we fill in for Glenn. Bye. <laughs> See ya.